So this is a menu walkthrough for the C70 and um, we'll just go over its paces. Um, I've set it up in such a way so that um, you could see the output, the output um, screen displays for every setting that's going on. And um, also we'll just walk through everything gradually. So first things first we'll start is from the screen itself. If you look at the screen at the um, left corner of the screen, there's the finger hand icon there of which you could touch and to give you access to other um, functions such as the white balance. Um, I'll shake my picture up so you can see this. The white balance, NDs, T-stops, ISO, shutter speed, and the other um, custom button, which also brings out more options. So if I touch the button after that, that's when we get to see more functions that we can access just from touching the screen alone without diving into the menu. We get to see we have zebra, picking, false color, max and lot which we can also access when you're actually using um, um profiles such as the c-log 2 or the c-log 3 to expose the um the camera itself then if i go out of that by going back if you look at the top um left corner there's also like a um, film with a gear icon that when you touch it takes you into another mode this is where you could easily just get to access whether you're in super the five mode or you're going to super 16 mode which will allow you to record 180 frames per second when you're doing like a crop or you could actually go into a second card function whereby you can actually do special functions such as relay double slot recording or do main a sub b recording like when you have like a different um, dual codex that actually could actually work depending on the function you assign on the recording mode we actually have um the normal recording slow and fast pre-recording main and continue like um switch over continuously to be then the slow and fast clip um with audio or with sound and if we go back out of this you could actually scrub and see more what we actually get to see um, this from the touch screen you don't know actually dive into the menu these are like the essentials so we have like codecs such as um, the xavc in 10 bit hvec 422 we also have the mp4 in um, 420 10 bit and there's also the um, MP4 H264 that's in 8-bit codec, depending on what your flavor is. You actually get to access different data rates depending on where you are. So I could be like in XAVC and come here and actually see the other options of codecs with different, um, 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 with different actually compression on it. The long up being the one that is actually more effective in actually compressing, and um, the interframe recording is the other one um, that actually records independent frames individually without actually compressing them or without actually figuring out what's the difference to actually save space on the card um, but with the xavc you do right now that's an xavc you do not get um let me go back to slow and fast mode so you see what i mean um i'll go back a bit so if i'm in slow and fast motion right and i go forward to like the xavc uh when i check my frame rates um on my slow and fast motion you see that um, the highest I get up to um, this is the highest frame rate I get up to but if I mean the H factor is also 10 bit um, for y 42 10 bit and I go to um, we could get up to as high as 120 and this is just tapping the um, screen to actually access these functions with actually I'm getting dive into the menu, so it makes a quicker way for accessing menu. Um, it's also available in other um, codecs, I believe. If you actually go down to 420 and you go back, you see able to access the 120 function. If you go down to the MP4 and you go back, you can see access the um, um, 120 frames per second on slow and fast motion. Um, so go back to normal recording. So also here. Going back to um, the other codec, we can actually change our picture profile. So if you look at if you look at this right, um, there are a lot of normal picture profile. We have our C log two, our C log three, our BT seven hundred nine to wide gamut. That's the C one, C two, C three, rated with your different um, gamma settings conversion, including HDR. For those of you who want to record directly in HDR, you'll be using the PQ tone mapping. That will be um, mapping the um, um, the entire footage curve to the HDR gamma, which is um, the BT2020 color space and the PQ gamma curve space. 
Um, there's also HLG. I, I believe that's a lot more. It's, a, it's hybrid log gamma. The difference between H, a split difference between um, HDR and um, 709. It's a, um, a different flavor of HDR. Um, then from um, C6 um, to, let me see how far, yes, to C20. You can actually go back and actually customize it however you desire and actually um, figure out what the settings are would be for you. And um, you could go up or down of the curve, however you see. And for me, I was able to load like a custom lot into custom picture six and it, it mapped it to the gamma curve of C-Log2 and um, this, um, the Canon Cine gamut. So basically, if we get out of this place, um, we are back into um, the space where we are, where we're using Rec. 709, right? And um, there's the custom picture 6, which is what um, it's using now, and that's how we're getting the look we're actually getting. We could also load like all the custom picture looks um, and try that out, but I do not have um, several looks load up into the monitor I mean into the camera at the moment but yes you could actually load um, several custom lots to your heart desire um, so dive into the main menu if we hit the main menu button going all the way to the very first function um, we get to see if you're using the RF lenses you'll be able to access functions such as um, the iris mode whereby you have this function activated apart from that um, this way you can make custom increments using the zoom ring of those RF lenses to become like your iris. So it automatically becomes a conversion where you de-click um, the iris of that lens and have this whole, you could convert it into some kind of cinema feel because the aperture will be de-click if you're using like the zoom ring. Because the zoom ring doesn't have click and stops like um, it actually does in other um, photos. So um, this is for the um, ND filters. Normally you get up to six stops, but you could actually get up to um, ten stops when you turn this on by stacking NDs in front of the other. Um, here you can choose whether you're in shutter angle, clear scan, slow, or off, whatever your heart desire. But for now, I'm using shutter angle. Um, we have the ISO gains and in what increments it can go up to in the second page of the menu. Um, on the light meter, you have how it actually sees. What that uses just a small box to actually use that as a spotlight. And so what that box is on, what the area of interest will be on, that's what it will read off or a general um, calculation. I actually prefer using um, force color as a way of um, judging the image, and that I could just activate temporarily for now, for the sake of showing you. Leave this mode and just going to see log two, and go back out, and I could come into my frame here and um, I will turn on false color here. Um, it's turned on on my screen, but you can't see it now. So for you to actually see it, I'll have to go into the menu and um, go into the monitor menu, I believe. Yes, here, and say false color turn on. And that's how you get like sit on your own monitor. So you get like see all the exposure. So if I crank it down, you could actually see he's in the shadows. If I open it up, I could actually say, oh, okay, I have clean blacks. There's no more. There's nothing. There's just barely above. And I could bring the entire background a bit. And why is it exposed for the skin? I'm just still opening up to where the background is now like hot and like and the skin is like one stop over exposed on the right side and. That's how you could easily use um, force color, but when you turn it and activate it, even when you turn it off here, here just only controls the LCD. As you see, it's going off and on, but it's not changing in your picture. So you have to like go back to the inner menus and say turn off. I wish there was a way to actually just make it a global function so that it just turns on on one and turns off on the other all true and true because it's actually not something you keep there. For a long time though so going back um we're at um yep so you have like your auto focus mode so i'm using a cine lens so it's not going to show me um my auto focus um options because i'm using a cine lens if i go to a still lens i'll be able to access those functions and we'll be able to like see a couple of them so on the color temperature we have like what are you going to use kelvin or mirror so here we have the face detect that's 
still on, which is why you could get the box whenever it sees his face and um, face AF. Um, you could also um, map functions to your camera grip if you're doing um, those stuff. Then um, auto black um, balance. This is what you use. You do before you actually um, roll a camera, so you could actually get your the camera to calibrate the blacks of the sensor and make it clean. Um, it's usually great, and you have peripheral illumination when you're actually correcting. Um, if you know the focal length, if you see what it does on off, you could see how it just affects the edges of the lens. So for lens um, things that doesn't have um, total lens coverage. You could actually use this to prevent venienting from happening. Um, chromatic abrasion also for during high contrast scenario. You can leave it on most of the time. Um, lens diffraction, EFS lens. This is where it tells the camera to actually crop in a bit. If you're using like a, a lens that's not um, covering the full Super 35 mode, which is the Canon's EFS lens for this Super 35 sensor camera. Um, so. Yes, there's a digital stabilization when you're using that, and it also su supports anamorphic um, correction in the 1, 3, and the 2x squeeze. Okay, so if you move to the next function, this is where we have um, the custom picture style I was telling you about that we looked at. Okay, so we'll start with 709, so you see what that is doing. So that's the 709, the Canon 709 look. If we go back in, um, change the C log 2. Um, so now we are now in C log two with the same function. Then we can go back in and go to C log three, which um, slightly crushes the shadow and takes out like two stops and doesn't get mapped to the full range of the sensor. And you're not. Um, then we go to HDR because this is a 709 live recording. You would not be able to see it in HDR, but I believe hybrid log gamma will be able to display itself. Yes. The camera is live and you actually sleep into a bit. Okay, so um, this is hybrid log gamma and um, yeah, you could actually see the difference in hybrid log gamma. So now this is a custom lot that was mapped to, um, I just loaded this one of my custom lots and this is how it's not oversaturated, it's not jacked up, you have like normal contrast and stuff. Then we have um, the rest which we can go in and go you can go load like another lot if you want to do that you have to come to like edit files um choose where you want your lot to be mapped to right so probably it could be like um we could go all the way up to c log 2 cine gamut right color space metrics leave it as neutral then you come up to your look file right and you register a lot or something you get uh, if you have like a lot on it it's gonna like take that lot and load it into the um, camera uh, you can go and custom a lot of couple of things here and even increase your noise reduction not that you will need it because you have DGO sensor that do not allow um, that the DGO sensor that does um, that allows for very clean black so that's one way to um, quickly load um, your lot settings so the initialization which actually is for formatting the cards the super 35 sensor which you can also get into the super 16 mode 16 frequency that allows you get into um, various frequencies that you desire to record in and codecs and like we said also in the beginning and frame rates I'll just skip through this then we have like different forms of recording that's actually possible on this bit then you could also assign um, multiple function to your second card recording if you want to do record at a sub resolution a sub bridge rate or with also a color space conversion say you're recording and you also want dailies out so you could record your 4k in high res and you could record the second card could be recording proxy to mp4 that allow you to do editing um metadata is same thing as metadata where you can load your take scenes and all this that will transfer into resolve for um the clips that you'll be sorting um then we have our your audio input where you can actually choose there are a couple of inputs you could choose um there's the built-in mic that's on your one and two the built-in mic is like available on the body um there's also like input terminal so you could choose and say okay on channel one to what do you want so i could put the built-in mic i could ask um use the input terminal which is a small xl arrow um there's also um the mic terminal which is the um um, the TRS um, quarter inch jack that's also available on the camera's body. So there's a whole lot of robust supplies, and you could actually um, 
use the beauty mind for scratch audio and probably use your channel too for stuff they all have the ability to send phantom powers with the audio control at the back of the camera um so if we're going to the next you could see how you could um, decide whether you're gonna like set your levels manually or you could just dive in and modify a lot of them put in trimmings and limiters on um on the mic okay so yeah so you could act there's stuff called voice memo i haven't used that a lot so i don't even know what that is or what that does but yeah, that's also available so yeah you can now decide what channels goes into your um via hdmi if you're doing like an external recording um here's channel one and two you could also set it to three and four whatever the preference is on this menu we have the um lcd brightness um lcd um menu this way actually you could change the brightness and contrast of the screen um also increase the saturation if you need it but i usually do not mess with it apart from brightness i raise to two um just to make it a little bit brighter so um anamorphic lcd this is the discreasing whether it allows it happen on screen or on the hdmi you get so you could choose how that controls it when you turn the squeezing so you could also see um what's going on um why you're using an amorphic lens so um this is a black and white image you can activate this for the lcd and you could also um, it turns the image black and white um yes it just sucks out all the color and you could um this could be i do not know what reason you may have that would warrant you using this but the on-screen display this way we actually get to like control um how we get to see these menus and it has several for um it have it has several display settings that you can set up to showcase the information you really want and you could actually customize it to what you really want you get and make it really into your taste so if your screen feels too populated with things you're not interested in you could go into like a custom screen display and turn on and off what is it you want and what is it you don't want to where you actually at your heart's content um yeah so here you could um um mess with the opacity of um the on-screen display how you want them to be intrusive or not depending on what you're doing um same thing with the lots and um if you're actually doing like if you're actually monitoring hdr and sdr here you can actually set by how many dbs or how the conversion of the screen actually works if you're actually doing external recordings this would be useful to um like it says full range or the narrow range so um whether you're actually taking the full readout of the sensor so um going forward we have things like the focus guides that you already know which you can turn on and turn off in case you're using manual lens it tells you like now that's on I could actually do two for two frames and you can see that here that, that eye is just slightly out of focus and I if I just turn the lens barrel a bit there it's now in focus so um, going back to um, the menu of oh, on the LCD screen I still have um, false color turned on let me turn that off okay yeah so going back to the menu we have other settings such as the picking if we're using picking functions um how to modify them also magnification if you're doing like critical focus test um false color we've been here earlier um zebras which i do not use waveform i do not find it that important because it's just too small for me to read on a four inch or like the screen the lcd is very very small so markers if you're actually doing um um, framing and stuff they'll be useful for you so you can now choose that you want center markers two three five um crops on your grids or whatever it is you're actually doing and you can actually figure that out then you have also have aspect ratio markers i can get it show up like out here now but yeah same thing with safe areas if you're doing stuff that's supposed to be sensitive to um framing you could also use your safe areas also then network um this is when you can actually control uh your camera using like an ip function and you can see basic functions that allow you to like control the camera remotely which is the most essential function such as recording and all other stuff that's um, workable for the camera um here we have our custom button with um the i think that over um 13 custom buttons on the camera yeah and they all map to several things right now i have the record button here that's map the button 10 there's a 10 button close to the record button i map that to tracking in case i'm actually using the tracking function um 
I have an external recorder that actually showed you what that does. But basically, what it actually does is that when I turn it on, if there's an if this is like an autofocus, and when I tap it, right, it's actually give me um, the tracking marker, and it's gonna like track and follow uh, the the subject or the or the setting or or, or the person. So. Um, so we have like the reset and the normal stuff where you have like the CP menu. If you have multiple C70s, you want to transfer functions in between. You could actually do that with this by saving your preset and that's it. And you have your dates, language, um, the resolution you're sending via your HDMI, you can send out up to 4K. So we have time codes that will allow us to keep our audio video thing in sync. Um, there's also um, on the front dial, you can control how it works and custom um, customize it to how we want it to um, behave and its functions. So there's the key lock button. So we have the record button that's enabled and um, the touch screen, how we want it to react um, for uh, for all purposes and intent, the sensitivity of it. The tally lamp is the light that comes on on the camera and um, the fan you can actually set to different levels of how you fit automatic or always on where it actually decides when it should go on or go off um, you can leave it for automatic though then you have other things such as um, battery power certification firmware and your custom menu setting and we have gone through um, the entire wrap-up of what um, the menu structure of the C70 and what you should expect and what's available should you um, decide to um, pick up one it's quite a robust system though um, on the next um, if, uh, on the next um, video you're gonna see uh, or the previous video actually depending on which I post first you'll get to the, um, figure out the entire camera as it is so I've been with this camera for quite some time and so I had an issue not getting like a proper card for it because the card it uses is not normal SD card it uses a V90 card um, I'll, I'll probably show you what that looks like and if you use any card that's not a V90 card you will not be able to record in 120 frames per second you may be able to record other lower compression lower bit rate like 8 bit functions if you use the cards that you use on your 5D Mark IVs they will allow you to actually use um, the lower recording functions but the high end stuff you will not be able to um, get from it that's the entire menu structure we've just gone through and um, until next time Improvise, adapt, and overcome.